So today we're going to make a fun dog toy or a cat toy that's commonly referred to as a snuffle mat. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, are you guys ready to have a fun day? I'm Tanya, Dexter's mom. Today we're gonna to be making a fun pet toy for your dog or your cat, and we call it a snuffle mat. Dogs and cats like to get in and roost and smell. Did you know that a dog has a sense of smell 10,000 times more than we do? So they love using their nose, and this toy is gonna engage their nose. This is a fun DIY that you can do with your brothers and sisters, your friends, and of course the grown-up in the house. We're gonna need a few things today. We're gonna to need a ruler, some scissors, and this might be a job for the grown-ups in the house. Some fabric, and it doesn't have to be fancy. You can even use old blankets if you want. And then something with holes, like a shower mat or a sink liner. So are you ready to get started? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna take your rubber shower mat or kitchen sink liner, and you're gonna decide on how big you want it to be for your pet snuffle mat. So this is really big, but it doesn't have to be that big. We can cut it in half this way, and then half this way, or we can go half this way and cut it into three strips this way. It just depends on how many snuffle mats you wanna make and how big you wanna make them. So let's make our snuffle mat maybe about seven or eight inches. What do you think? You wanna give that a shot? So we're gonna take our ruler and let's go to the end of the snuffle mat. So if I take my ruler to the edge and I come here, I can see these holes. And so I'm gonna cut right next to the hole. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut all the way up there. And you might need a grown-up to help you with this. It depends on how hard it is for you. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm just gonna cut. Do you have any pets at home? What kind of pets do you have? And what are their names? All right, so we got the first cut. So if I look at it now, it's just over seven inches. So let's go ahead and make it a square. And we'll look for that hole. So let's cut on the other side of the hole over here. There. I think that looks like a great size for a snuffle mat. And because of how big the mat was, that means I can make lots of snuffle mats. So we can do this as a craft with our friends, or you can save it for later, or you can make a bunch of them if you have lots of dogs and cats, or give them away as gifts. I bet people would love to have these as a gift. Now what are we gonna put in this mat? That's where our fabric comes in. We need to make strips of fabric so that we can tie them into a rubber matting. Now there's no big rules for this. You want it to be about one inch wide, but it can be wider. You can go all the way up to two inches, but it's gonna make it a little harder to get through the holes. So one inch or one and a half inch, that's really good for the width. And then how long it is, you want it to be at least six inches longer means it's gonna be easier for little hands to tie. So anywhere from six to maybe about nine inches would be good. You're gonna to need to make lots of strips. If you have different colors of strips, it's gonna make it easier when you start tying it together. You'll see when we get going. So now we need to cut our strips. If the fleece or your fabric is too thick for your scissors, then have a grown-up help you. So we're gonna lay our fabric out. We're gonna get our ruler. And remember, we wanna have it about one inches. And it just so happens that my ruler is one inches wide. So I can take my ruler and lay it on the edge of my fabric and then cut down the center. I'm gonna start on the other side and work my way towards you. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can draw a line too if you want. And I'm just gonna kinda guess and keep going. And this project can take more than one day. So it might take a couple days to finish, and that's okay, it'll give you something to do. Now that you have a long strip, 
we need to make them into the shorter strips. Remember we said that it's going to be six to nine inches long? So let's take the six and we'll make a cut. And we'll move that fabric away and we'll do it again. There's our six and we'll make our cut. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to need to make lots of strips. Alright, so to practice your ties, take your fabric and go through one of the holes. Pull it halfway. You have a long one. Take that other side and you're going to go to the hole right next to it. Put it through that hole and you're going to pull it like, like that. Now flip it over. So you're going to take it you're going to start to make a circle, but leave some bunny ears. See? You're going to take the one on the front, and you're going to go behind and through. So we're going to go behind and see it coming through. You're going to grab that here, keep hold this one, and we're going to pull and tight. And there you go. So keep practicing. It'll get easier and easier as you practice. So mine has a front and a back because mine has little rubber stoppers because it's meant to be inside a tub. And so what I want to do is I actually want to start my project using the back side. So what I'm going to look for are those holes. And I want to take my fabric and I want to go through that hole. And I only want to go halfway through that hole. So see now how it's half? And then I want to tie the edge. So I want to take it and I want to tie it. Just like that. So we got one down. I'm going to start the first row with all the same color, which happens to be a rainbow tie-dye. Now see how we went into that hole? We're going to go into the same hole one more time. And remember, we're going to go from the same side. So we're going to go into the hole, push it through, and pull it halfway out the other side. And I want to tie it to the top. So my first ones are going to be tied to the top. So I'm going to take it. And I'm going to tie it to the top. Do one tie. So now I have two. I see the next hole there. I'm going to go through that and tie it to the top here. I'm going to go through that hole, tie it to the top. And I'm going to do that all the way. Through the hole, tie it to the top. Through the hole, tie it to the top. So through the hole, up here, and tie it to the top. Make it nice and tight. See how we got it? I take my next piece of fabric. See my hole right here? Going to go right through and goes to the top and tie it. We're going to do all those holes. One more for the top. There. You got one row finished. See how it looks? Every hole has a piece of fabric tied to the top. Now we have all those other holes to do. So this is when I like to take the next color of fabric. It's going to get a little harder, a little more challenging. So you're going to go to your next hole right here and you're going to take your fabric and go through the hole and tie to the side over here. So we're going to go through that hole and bring it to the side and tie on the side. Here we go. Now we got it on the side. Do you see the top tie? That hole from that one and then this new one? We're going to go from the top hole to the bottom hole. So we'll go through the top, 
I'm going to pull it out a little on the other side. See you coming out the other side? And we're going to go to that bottom hole and bring it out the other side. See? This is the front now. Now we're going to tie that in a knot. So we're going to take it and tie it in a knot. Just like that. And see the back? There it is. And don't forget, the grown-ups can help you. They can show you where the holes are. So now we're going to go to the next set. You're going to go to that top where your rainbow one was and then the hole below it. Pull it through part way and now the hole below it. And you're going to flip it to the front and pull your ties. See? And we're going to tie it in a knot. And we're going to do it again. Go flip it back over to the back. Find your next two holes. Start with that rainbow hole. Put your fabric in. And then the hole below it, right there. It goes right in. And flip it back to the front. And we're going to pull our ends. So there's our our string and we're going to tie it in a knot. Okay, look at that. We're getting there. Look it, it's getting nice and snuffly. Now sometimes it's easier if the grown-up does the, and maybe the grown-up goes in that top rainbow hole. Make sure they pull it through. And the hole below it just like that, and then you come in and tie your knot. Just like that. And you and the grown-up are going to do it until all of those holes are filled with your fabric. And then, the best part is, we get to fill it with treats and snacks for our dogs. And for our kitties, you can do treats or you can do catnip for our dogs. What do you think? Look at that great job you guys did. And see all the tops of the ties? And see how poofy it is? Look at that. If you're going to use this for a cat, you can just take catnip and sprinkle it all over and watch your kitty cat enjoy playing with the catnip. You can even use cat treats too. Since this is Dexter's, we're going to grab Dexter's treat jar. We're going to get some of his treats. And for new dogs and new kitties, you're just going to take the treats and toss them around the snuffle mat. So it's nice and easy. But for dogs like Dexter, who have played with snuffle mats for a long time, you can make it more challenging by hiding the treats in the pieces of fabric. And then they have to really snuffle around to find those treats. So do we think it's time to give it to Dexter? Do you think he's gonna like it? Dexter likes his snacks, so I bet he will. What is that silly boy doing? Dexter, don't you want some snacks? Don't you want some snacks? Oh, you cool dude. Are you ready for some snacks? So when Dexter eats snacks, what do we need to do? We need to take off his silly glasses. And he needs to wear his snood to keep his ears out of the way. Right? Are you ready for your snuffle mat? You want some snacks? Well, you got big eyes. Are you ready for your snuffle mat? All right, little man. Here's your snuffle mat. Now remember, when your dog is eating, you want to walk away.
Now remember, go have a positively great day. We'll see you next time. Let me tell you a story about the baddest dog that ever was. Sneaking food from the fridge, tearing up the garbage. He's a goofy old Dexter the dog. He's a bad, bad Dexter the dog. The baddest pup that there ever was. Seat stealing all day long. Howling like a junkyard dog. <laughs>